the efforts by a foreign adversary to interfere and undermine our democratic processes and, and those of our allies pose a serious threat to all Americans. This hearing and others this subcommittee has conducted and will be conducting in the future are an important bipartisan step in understanding the threat and the best ways to confront it going forward. I had two in-person meetings and one phone call with the White House counsel about Mr. Flynn. Um, the first meeting occurred on January 26. I called Don McGahn first thing that morning and told him that I had a very sensitive matter that I needed to discuss with him, that I couldn't talk about it on the phone and that I needed to come see him. So I told them again that there were a number of press accounts of statements that had been made by the vice president and other high-ranking White House officials about General Flynn's conduct that we knew to be untrue. We then walked through with Mr. McGahn essentially why we were telling them about this. And the first thing we did was to explain to Mr. McGahn that the underlying conduct that General Flynn had engaged in was problematic in and of itself. Secondly, we told him we felt like the vice president and others were entitled to know that the information that they were conveying to the American people wasn't true. We told him the third reason was is because we were concerned that the American people had been misled about the underlying conduct and what General Flynn had done. And additionally, that we weren't the only ones that knew all of this, that the Russians also knew about what General Flynn had done. And the Russians also knew that General Flynn had misled the vice president and others. Because in the media accounts, it was clear from the vice president and others that they were repeating what General Flynn had told them. And that this was a problem because not only did we believe that the Russians knew this, but that they likely had proof of this information. And that created a compromise situation, a situation where the national security advisor essentially could be blackmailed by the Russians. Finally, we told them that we were giving them all of this information so that they could take action, the action that they deemed appropriate. Hold on. Right. I think Mike Flynn um, is somebody who honorably served our country in uniform for over 30 years. Um, and I think, as he's noted, uh, Lieutenant General Flynn was, was asked for his resignation because he misled the Vice President. But beyond that, I think he did have an honorable uh, career. He served with distinction in uniform for over 30 years, and the President does not want to smear a good man. Role at the White House in those 18 days. Was he still fulfilling his normal national security advisor duties? Yeah, I'm not going to get back into it. I will say, as I mentioned, the time. Worrisome that he was still doing that when he was a potential target you know, of Russian blackmail. Can I just one thing that I think is important to know is, is let's look at again how this came down. A someone who is not exactly um, a supporter of the president's agenda, who a couple days after this first conversation took place refused to uphold a lawful order of the president, um, who is not exactly someone that, that was excited about President Trump uh, taking office or his, or his agenda. She had been, hold on, Caitlin, Caitlin, hold on, no, Caitlin, let me answer the question. She had come here, given a heads up, told us there were materials, and at the same time we did what we should do. Just because someone comes in and gives you a heads up about something and says, uh, I want to share some information, it doesn't mean that you immediately jump the gun and go take an action. I think if you flip this scenario and say, what if we had just dismissed somebody because a political opponent of the president had made an utterance, you would argue that it was pretty uh, irrational to act in that manner. We did what we were supposed to do. The president made ultimately the right decision, um, and I think he was proven that... that, uh, that she was. I. I. I General that he the appointed by the Obama administration and a strong opponent, a strong supporter of the, of Clinton. So that's now. I'm correct with Pence and the Russians and Russians on a phone call. So. While he's under investigation, why is he being allowed to participate as the national? I, I really don't recall the schedule from that day, Brian's up. Right. But, well, but then, the point is, again, I, I think this is, look, I, I answered the question a moment ago. But I think as I went through the timeline, um, Sally Yates came over here, gave us a heads up, provided us uh, the opportunity, made it very clear that materials were available. 
uh, for the council to review. But um, and, and we followed that process. And within 11 days after that, we accepted General Flynn's resignation that the president had asked for. While he's under investigation, I understand. But what is look, the, we're not going to relitigate the past on this. I think we've been very clear as to what uh, what happened and why it happened. I think the president made the right decision, uh, and and we've moved on. Like.